Thank you so much uh, for your time. So it's been about a year since uh, your appointment. I need you to tell me your personal experience at Kenya Airways so far. Oh, you know, uh, it's, it's overall a, a, a very good experience because um, I, I always wanted to uh, stay and work in airline, uh, airline industry. Uh, so here I am in the heart of the airline industry. But in parallel, it was a discovery of Kenya as a country. I knew a little before. I came here 21 years ago as a student. Nothing comparable with the situation today. Uh, but it was like uh, rediscovering or discovering um, a country with a completely different uh, approach. Uh, because now I live here. Uh, so it's become my country. Uh, so it's, um, the first year is also a little an emotional turnaround. Because you come, you discover new, new places, you discover new people. Uh, and in the same time, uh, you have to make decisions. And there's uh, intense path of decision-making process uh, uh, of learning and doing, or learning by doing. And, uh, so the first year is, um, is, uh, is positive, even though it was tough. So uh, you came in at a very critical point for Kenya Airways, mm -hmm. right in the middle of financial restructuring. Uh, mm -hmm. Today as it is, we have government as a major shareholder. We have uh, 10 banks owning mm -hmm. a significant part of the stake as well. Um, mm -hmm. What's the financial status of KQ today? I think that we've started uh, a, a little, uh, what I would call a new chapter. Um, so there was a chapter that was closed uh, end of 2017, uh, uh, which was really the, the moment where we could communicate that the financial restructure was, was finished. It's always a very delicate moment for companies uh, because, you know, you, there are things you can communicate publicly to, to, to the press, and there are things you cannot really communicate because of the pretty tough, if I shouldn't say pretty, very tough financial negotiations. There's always a question about the future. And uh, I'm very happy uh, that this chapter is behind us, uh, so the shareholding is stabilized. And that's really the, the strong message to the market. Yes, we, we went through a, a shaky period. Uh, I hope it's over in terms of finance. Now, my role and my assignment is to uh, guide us or to push us through an industrial restructuring. You know, without the financial restructuring, we wouldn't be talking today because uh, it's really when it, we reached the point in which you had to address it, yes? And as you mentioned, the Kenyan state uh, has shown a huge support and also a huge trust in the company. Uh, of course, it's the national symbol, but you know, uh, providing a um, sovereign guarantee of $750 million, uh, uh, it's not an easy decision in any country uh, because that's a very, very big commitment. Yeah? I also have to say that the fact that the banks converted their equity, uh, their, sorry, their debt into equity, and that they showed, uh, you know, they appointed two representatives, we have meetings, it's also a sign of a um, norm normalization of relations, should I say. So we start, we start addressing the issue. There is a problem, there is a challenge, we just addressed it. And, and quite frankly, that dominated the first, uh, the first six months uh, uh, of, my, of my work since June uh, last year. Of course, I have to mention that also that was a shaky period because of the presidential election. Not only the first one, but also the second one. And that was a period when the company, uh, management, but all of us, we were, you know, a little defocused or maybe influenced by what's going to happen in the country. Uh, that, that was my big learning of Kenya, by the way. And uh, I'm, uh, I have been there for the elections. I found it went very well. Uh, but I'm also happy that this chapter is closed okay. because our business mm. was affected. Okay. So let's talk about uh, then the performance now, now that the restructuring, you're hoping that it's done. So what are you focusing on now or what you would you say has changed in the last one year from an operations perspective? Because from the last uh, financial announcements, we saw some, some improvements. Uh, you cut loss by more than half, mm -hmm. uh, operating uh, profit increased. So. What has changed in terms of operations? I, I, I think that, uh, you, you know, we have to always recognize that um, uh, the process of restructuring an airline never stops. 
And uh, I came, I'm very happy that it's improved, but I didn't start it. I just continued what was done previously. And what I can do is I, had, I can put, and I, I put a different vision, maybe sometimes uh, different from what was done, the way it was done before. But uh, we have to um, uh, uh, focus ourselves on continuity. You know? In that line, the problem is that the decisions of today are influencing the things that are going to happen in 12, 15, 18 months. So I'm, I'm very happy that this process was already started two years before I came. Now I, can, I have to strengthen and focus on enhancing it, and, but also on reversing a little the paradigm. Because I just had a meeting today with, with uh, our pilots, and you know, they kept saying to me, look, for so many years we heard like cut jobs, cut network, losses. So let's, let's focus on something more positive. Of course, we have to continue cut losses, and my target is to uh, have uh, Kenya Airways being a profitable company again. There is absolutely no way to do it in the old-fashioned way and the old way, so we have to acknowledge that the competition is here, will be here, and will be reinforced. The way we control our costs is a fundamental way of, uh, a fundamental difference in, in terms of approach, but also, and that's what this I always believe, is you cannot only cut costs if you don't grow the revenues, because that makes no sense. There is not a company that lives out of just cutting costs. You have to focus on growing the revenues. Therefore, the operational decisions of starting growing the network, taking the aircraft back that we subleased, and preparing uh, a long-lasting development five-year plan that will allow us to really ramp up and regain what should be our position on African continent. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, do you expect that maybe the airline will need more capital injection, even with the new shareholding, or what's going to? That's, that's not, uh, capital injection is not something that we are aiming at now. Uh, so that's the part of the chapter that was just closed uh, end of 2017. Uh, but there might be a moment where we, we might think about uh, finding new shareholder, increase the equity. You know, at this moment when I talk to you, our five-year development plan has not yet been approved by the board. Uh, we discussed it a couple of times, the drafts. As soon as it's done, then, then we will, uh, and I expect it to be done really within the next weeks, mm, we, we will also know what is our balance sheet position and what are the uh, equity that we need to, to, uh, to finance the growth. So th there is this uh, partnership that we've seen, uh, maybe co some communications even coming from the Capital Markets Authority in regards to your partnership with the Kenya Airports Authority. Mm -hmm. I want to understand what kind of efficiency that brings on board and the specifics of this partnership that we are here to see come to life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I cannot answer this question without having a broader view of how the airlines that are our biggest competitors in Kenya are functioning. If you take seven or eight biggest competitors, starting from Rwanda through Ethiopian, Turkish, Emirates, all the people that uh, are very well managed and have grown their presence in Africa for the last 20, 25 years, they all have a different business model and we are the only airline that has a really privately owned business model. And uh, when looking at the strategy of Kenya Airways with the, with the board, we just had an open discussion why they grow faster than us, how they do, what they do differently than we do uh, that allows them to be uh, simply more aggressive uh, on, on, a growing, uh, on a growing market. And you know, in this area, we are the only one which are public listed companies, so full transparency, annual reports, uh, communication to CMA, etc. We are the only one which really have a very strong uh, private presence. Uh, they're all fully state-owned. We have a completely different rules of uh, relations with our employees, lack of unions, uh, regulated salaries, and all of them uh, are also in one basket in terms of national interest. So they are uh, putting all the assets to work together, not that much for the benefit of the airline, but for the benefit of the country. And that's a very different mandate. And uh, while discussing this potential partnership with uh, KAA, this is what we had in mind, and this is what we presented to, to Kenyan government, and uh, me, me, meaning the management, the board, is that we really have to look at what are, what is, what are the elements 
that will allow us uh, to compete outside of Kenya, because we don't compete inside Kenya. Of course, we compete. We have competitors at Wilson, etc. But it's not where the biggest added value comes from. We should be focusing, as an airline, in creating connectivity, so bringing Kenya closer to other countries, create cargo capacity, create jobs, and contribute to the GDP, which is the role of many airlines. If I take the Gulf carriers competitors, their role is really to grow the GDP of the country much more than to grow the benefits of the airline. That's the biggest difference that we should be really focused on. And, and so what are the specific things that maybe the proposals that you've made to the government, the specific things that you think will make Kenya Airways effective in Kenya and also profitable on the same line? So th 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 this is a stage in which uh, everything that we could say publicly was, was said. I think that there will be much more details in the next weeks and months. Now there is a process of, uh, that is regulated by Kenyan law. Uh, it's called PPP, pu Public-Private uh, Partnership, mm, uh, which is a pretty new regulation, sh should, should I say, because it was introduced like four, four years ago or five, five years ago. Uh, so we, uh, we are focusing now on delivering uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, the, to the cabinet uh, the necessary uh, documents. And I think that once we have it and it's approved, then there will be time for you know, more detailed communication. I think that at this stage, we already said quite a lot. And uh, my biggest concern is that competition is also reading what we do. So this is why I'll stay uh, more general on this. Mm -hmm. All right, Sebastian, because I want us to take a break here and uh, we'll be back in just a few moments now focusing on how KQ is viewing the rest of the African market when we talk aviation. Don't go too far. Welcome back to the CNBC Africa special with me, Charles Gitong, and we are talking to Sebastian because who's there managing director or the group managing director and CEO of Kenya Airways. Thank you so much again for your time. So you've launched a couple of new direct flights, uh, Mauritius most recently and Cape Town as well. And uh, we are looking forward to that direct flight to the US. But before we talk about the US, these two most recent in Africa, what do they mean for KQ and why are they important to you at this point? You know, they, the, the, the development of the intra-African network is, is uh, what, what is the essence of our business. So flying to Mauritius um, was a, a, a long-lasting initiative. Um, it's a partnership between us and our Mauritius. So they fly three weekly, we fly four weekly. So it's a daily product. So every customer can go back and forth daily. Cape Town, we're already present because we're, f we're flying through um, Victoria Falls. Uh, so there, were, there was a stop and we're continuing. Now it's a, on top of this, we fly a, a direct flight to Cape Town. But of course, it's just the beginning of, of the development of the African network. Um, you know, f f we are an African carrier and the connectivity intra-Africa is still um, at the medium level. I think there is a much more opportunity of flying in between the cities of particularly Central and Southern Africa, which is the, su the so-called Sub-Saharan Africa, which is where is the heart of our network. Um, and I, I see in the next years quite a significant number of, of uh, opportunities to connect, uh, to connect uh, different points in Africa, given the geographical size of the continent. It's really a big continent and flights are long. So uh, for airline, it's just, you know, it's, a, it's, it's wonderful. You have long distances and, and people at, at uh, the two ends. Um, so that, that's the, the, the significance is that we really are going to strengthen and develop this, this network for, 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 for the years. It's just the two first that will be new coming soon. All right. Uh, and the U.S., uh, of course, there's a lot of uh, excitement uh, mm -hmm. towards October. Uh, but I want you to make a case, a uh, financial business case for this, sustainable business case for this direct uh, route between Kenya and the U.S. How does it look for KQ going forward? Because obviously there will be other people coming in. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a, it's a very big risk for us. So I, uh, I know the excitement part. I, I lived it. Uh, on the first day of my work in Kenya Airways, 
Everybody asked me, when are you launching, um, uh, when are we opening uh, New York? Uh, first meeting with pilots, when are we opening New York? So everybody has a, an agreement, like a collective agreement that we should be flying. Now moving this from excitement to business is a completely different uh, uh, effort. Uh, the business case exists because this is a non-stop flight. So uh, despite the fact that there is huge competition, we're going to offer really a unique product. You have to top it with the fact that today you have uh, 120,000 uh, US uh, customers, US citizens originating from, from the US who already comes to Kenya through different routes uh, a year. So it's a market that, that exists. Um, you have about 50 companies American companies with headquarters in the US, most of them on the east coast of, of the United States, who uh, elect uh, Nairobi as, uh, as the headquarters, at least for the, for the region. So there is a, a market which we do not build. This market exists. Now, having said that, the problem on uh, New York market, because for me it's a market in itself, is that it's so highly competitive that everybody goes there, everybody fights for the same group of customers. And as far as I believe that we really have a very nice offer on the East African side, because when we fly people here, we can then fly them to you know, Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, uh, uh, Mauritius that we mentioned, etc. On the US side, this is where the ca challenge comes, uh, because, because customers in the US are ready to have so many offer and such a big price variety that we, we will have to challenge ourselves and be very efficient on, on that route. We have taken, I know, a controversial or at least uh, not natural decision of immediately flying a daily flight. And that's part of the business case. You know, when you want something, you go for it. Yes? If you have a daily flight, then both customers from business side, but also from the premium leisure. So, you know, these are the people who are ready to pay $10,000 per couple of more for a few days of holidays, they rather are busy and they are expecting a product with flexibility. They want to come on a Monday, come back on a Wednesday, or fly on a Tuesday, come back on a Saturday. We are offering every day of the week a connection. So normally you, you ramp up, you know, you do four weekly, then five weekly, and then you go on a daily product. But we had this discussion internally, and that was quite a lot of uh, uh, challenging of ourselves, what do we do? And we decided we fight for it because of the excitement, because of the support, but also because we believe that this is a little of a breakthrough. Uh, KQ stops crying and complaining, we take the sword and the shield and we go fighting. That's how I would like to approach the, the US market. Okay, and because you said it's a big risk, the question is, do you have the muscle to accompany the amount of risk that might come out of it. You, you know, when you have too much muscle, you don't, you don't uh, move too, free, too, too, too fast. We are just at the moment where we have to take a fight, uh, uh, just, just to believe that we, uh, we can do it. Of course, there are risks, but I, I think that both the, the company and the environment, and just the fact that you're asking me, is just promoting this. So I'm, I'm absolutely confident. Uh, but still uh, very humble and uh, a little scared, yes. Uh, I'll gladly see the 28th of October coming, but then it's not about the 28th, it's about the next month and the growth of this market. So, yeah, no, we, we, are, we are determined but, uh, but scared. So for you, what's the biggest risk? Is it uh, competition and uh, the fact that you say there might be a lot of our wide price variance between who else is offering what? The the U.S. airlines coming in? No, no, U.S. airlines would, would be more than welcome. Uh, I, I think that the, 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 all the things you, you, you mentioned are a risk for us. It, it starts with a commercial risk, but then operational risk. Just, just, we just had a, we have a discussions on this project literally every day. Um, just imagine, we will be leaving in October, in the middle of the summer in Kenya, and reaching New York where there is a good autumn and start of winter. So just that this from operational perspective is a challenge. It's going to be a 15 hour flight, 14 and a half, 15 hours. We're going to have operational, uh, um, yeah, operational issues. You have to balance the aircraft, 
take eventually some cargo, be sure that you go on time and, and you are back on time. But also then, as you mentioned, you know, competition is not sleeping. Huh? They, will, uh, they, will, they will run after us because this is the market that everybody wants. So th these, are, these are the things that we are looking after. And uh, I'll be in New York in three weeks' time to have the second set of our uh, marketing efforts there. But it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice, but it's exciting. It's exciting and, you know, you, you have then once and well now and then you take the figures and the excitement is, uh, wow, yeah, it's, it's still ahead of us. All right, so let's talk about the competition that you've alluded to on several points here. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking at the region, uh, there's Ethiopian Airlines. Uh, mm -hmm that is coming in too quickly and uh, not for forgetting also the government in Ethiopia is developing the airport there yes. uh, to position it as, as an East African hub, which means uh, obviously now Kenya will be facing the fire on that sector. And uh, there's also Rwanda, which mm -hmm. is also quite investing a lot. But anytime we talk about these two airlines and many other airlines in the Gulf region especially, mm -hmm. there's always that, for lack of a better word, uh, a more stronger relationship with the government. Mm -hmm. uh, than especially financially, it has financial implications. So how then do you come in as a commercial airline that has a purely commercial uh, business uh, strategy and face some of these people, especially in the light of the, uh, air the open skies policy now that we have single African air transport market? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, there's many elements of, 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 of your question. I think, and I fully agree with you, and I would use the word strong relations with the government of our competition. I'm coming back to the um, vision uh, I, I have that they, they have a different mandate that we have. And that's indeed a challenge which is not easy to overcome. Because uh, we are uh, having as mandate to pay dividends and be, be profitable, pay dividends. Someone else next door with the same market access has as mandate to grow the GDP of the country. So that creates a completely an uh, uneven playing field. They, we, we play different games on the same market for the same customer. Um, so there's two ways of answering this. Uh, first, uh, competition is always good. It's healthy. Uh, I don't think that lack, lack of competition has brought any success to, to, to anyone. Monopolies always ended badly. That's economic history for the last 1,000 years. So for me, the fact that we have to run faster and have the muscles you asked me about, uh, it's very good because that shows us that we, you know, nothing is given, which, by the way, was a little our past. Yeah, we were just overprotected, and then suddenly we stopped. That's one. Second, this is the project of 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 the PPP, and this is the project we submitted uh, to to the government. Is that we cannot, on the other side, be naive and think that just by being fitter and better, we will we will fight this competition because we will not because we have completely different aims and just the board, which I'm part of, has a different uh, set of rules. Mm, uh, by the way, the, the different set of rules toward the shareholders, who are a listed company. So from that perspective, I think that looking at having more Kenya strategic approach of the airline and focusing more not on what the company can do, but what the company can bring to the country, that's, that's, that's the second part of the, of the answer. And one should not exclude the other one. This is not because we might go more to that direction, that suddenly, okay, we'll sit and then just increase the cost and, and just sit, be happy and be protected. No, no, I think that the combination of both aspects uh, which, by the way, the, the golf carriers are doing. Yeah? They are very competitive. They are very well managed. They have excellent fleet. Uh, operations are smooth. It's, it's, it's really something that uh, I would look at as uh, our future, the combination of these two elements. Okay. So uh, briefly, I want us to talk about uh, two things. Uh, number one is what you think the next year is looking like for Kenya Airways. What are your expectations mm -hmm. uh, in terms of performance? Improvement, improvement, improvement. We, we, we are uh, far away from achieving what we should. Um, uh, we have a lot of external factors that we have to fight. Just volatility of the fuel price. Uh, when I came to Kenya, it was $52 uh, Brent uh, per barrel. It's 74 this morning. So 25% uh, uh, increase. Uh, then, of course, competition. Then, of course, our internal challenges in improving our quality of service. So I think that we should be focused on a more longer view, two, three years, how to step by step continuously go toward the profitability and toward the development of the network. More, uh, more flights, 
more connections. That's where we should be going. Uh, and finally, you've been appointed to the Board of Governors of IATA. Congratulations yes. for that. In the next three years, what are some of the things that you'd hope to contribute at that level? You know, IATA Board of Governors is a body that is supposed to look after the interest of the whole in the, uh, in, in airline industry. So I'm very proud to be part of this, uh, this body because I'll give my African voice into this, uh, into this debate. What I'm hoping is that uh, African uh, airlines uh, uh, keep being supported in, in the growth to the, together with the airports. But I'm also hoping that uh, within a period of time, maybe two years, there will be an IATA uh, General Assembly uh, in Nairobi. Uh, that would be my personal ambition, is to bring all these people from the airline industry here to Kenya and show them how this Af our African market is growing and what is the, the potential here. That, that I'll really work for. All right, we'll look forward to that. Thank you so Thank much you for your much. time. And that has been Sebastian Mikos, who's the Group Managing Director of Kenya Airways, telling us about the airline and also his thoughts about the African market in general. And that's CNBC Africa special for this month. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.